a patriot, a Thatcherite, a Eurosceptic, a monarchist, and a staunch Roman Catholic whose faith sustained him throughout his life. And he was a truly great friend in need. I can vouch for that. And a fine parliamentarian. He was probably the best potential father of the house we will now never have. <laughs> he had a zest for life. He had a joy de vivre. For him, the glass was never half empty. It was three quarters full. <laughs> he was a doughty champion for Basildon and then for Southend. So thank you, Prime Minister and Her Majesty and the Privy Council for making Southend a city after all. It was the right thing to do. And our apologies to Cleethorpes. <laughs> <laughs> While you're at it, if you can help Southend United, they're having a bit of a <laughs> They really need, sir, all the help they can get. But you never knew what David was going to do next. That Essex cheeky chappy smile, that impish Amos grin, always with some hint of gentle mischief standing behind it. He once even persuaded His Holiness the Pope to bless a boiled sweet. <laughs> but my, right on, my friend and neighbour will explain in a moment, Mr Speaker. <laughs> but he did have a serious side too. And it's on that which I really want to focus the rest of my contribution today. In the last few years, David had become increasingly concerned about what he called the toxic environment in which MPs, particularly female MPs, were having to operate. He was appalled by what he called the vile misogynistic abuse which female MPs had to endure online. And he told me very recently that he wanted something done about it. Three years ago, three years, my right honourable friend from Mid Bedfordshire wrote a powerful article about this on Conservative Home in which he quoted the following social media post. I want to see you trapped in a burning car and watch the heat from the flames as they melt the flesh from your face. I ask you, Mr Speaker, what did she do to ever deserve that? Mm. Another fallen comrade, Joe Cox, whose sister now graces this place, said we have more in common than divides us. And I think she was absolutely right. Mr Speaker, all of us, wherever we come from, came here to try and help people. We may disagree sometimes passionately about how best to help people, but surely we can all agree that we came here to try, yeah, yeah. for which we are now systematically vilified, day after day. And I simply say to you, ladies and gentlemen, that enough is enough. Because we all have absolutely one thing in common. We are legislators. So I humbly suggest, Mr Speaker, we get on and do some legislating. I suggest that if we want to ensure that our colleague didn't die in vain, we collectively, all of us, pick up the baton, regardless of our party, and take the forthcoming online harms bill and toughen it up market. Yeah. So let's put, if I may be so <coughs> presumptuous, David's law onto the statute book. Mm -hmm. The essence of which would, would be that while people in public life must remain open to legitimate criticism, they can no longer be vilified or their families subject to the most horrendous abuse, especially from people who hide behind a cloak of anonymity. Yeah. Yeah with the connivance of the social media companies for profit. <laughs>